So now that we've established that the Hardy-Weinberg principle provides us a baseline based off of this idea of being a non-evolving population, being a contrived, constant allele frequency and genotype frequency population, let's look at a little bit of the mathematical side of the Hardy-Weinberg uh, principle by looking at what we would refer to in this next, uh, not really a flow chart, but next topic of a Hardy-Weinberg equation. So we'll call this the hardy Weinberg equation and it's not going to be a flowchart more so um, an idea that we're going to establish and then look at a very quick example so the Hardy Weinberg equation is the following it's a tool okay it is a mechanism just like the Hardy Weinberg principle is a tool it's an idea that helps us understand normal versus abnormal uh, the Hardy Weinberg equation allows us to very accurately do the following it allows us to calculate Okay, it allows us to calculate allele and genotype frequencies, allele and geno frequencies, but the stipulation is that the population has to be under Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Okay, so this is our idea. We're going to be using the Hardy-Weinberg equation to calculate allele frequencies and genotype frequencies um, of populations that are exhibiting themselves underneath a Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium prerequisite of sorts. So basic ideas to understand uh, are the following. So you have to understand some terms. In Hardy-Weinberg equation, there's going to be the term letter P. Letter P will be defined and is typically defined as the frequency, this is all about frequencies, allele and genotype frequencies, frequency of what we would consider typically, and I don't want to write of twice, of dominant alleles. That's usually what P stands for. We'll say that the dominant allele in our situation right now is capital A. Q is equal to the frequency of, what do you think? Frequency of recessive alleles. And in our situation right now, a recessive allele will be a lowercase a. And you have to understand that the frequency of the dominant allele and the frequency of the recessive allele in the whole population is going to equal what? In essence, you have to understand that P plus Q has to absolutely equal. Remember all those numbers we were doing? Frequency equals 0 0.5, frequency equals 0 0.5, frequency equals 0 0.8, frequency 0.2. All of those added up to 1. And this is something that Hardy-Weinberg equation tells us 110%. That P plus Q has to equal 1. But this is not as useful as a sort of derivative of this equation, sort of something that's even more powerful than this simple P plus Q scenario is the following. When we take P plus Q, okay, and we equal it to one, and you know what we're gonna do, interestingly enough, is square it. And I'm gonna show you why in just a second. And so if we square P plus Q, you have to remember, P plus Q is simply the frequency of a dominant allele and the frequency of a recessive allele. But just think of it as a dominant allele and a recessive allele. AKA, just think of P plus Q as the fact that you're taking an individual that has P and, and have, obviously has Q and you're crossing that individual hopefully with another individual that has P and Q. This is starting to look very much similar to a Punnett square and it technically is because look what you're going to get. P times P will give us P squared. P times Q will give us PQ. P times Q will also give us PQ, and Q times Q will give us Q squared. You know what we've just derived from this? We've derived the following powerful, powerful frequencies. Calculate the allele and genotype frequencies under Hardy-Weinberg equation. Let's see if we did that under this situation. You know what the probability of capital A, capital A is going to be? Well, where would you usually see capital A, capital A? Let's just actually do this. Let's, where would you usually see capital A, capital A if you do a classic uh, cross of uh, two heterozygous individuals? Right there, right? That's capital A, capital A. Let's go to the corresponding site. Look what I have here, P squared. That is exactly what capital A, capital A probability is. The probability of this genotype is going to be P squared. Okay, let's continue in this example, the probability of capital A, lowercase a. Well, that would be right over here and also over here. We have P plus Q, PQ and PQ. That's simply, if you just do some basic math, that's just 2PQ. 
Okay, that's another very nice, uh, you know, convenient way to calculate the frequency at that position. Well, let's finish it off for purposes of uh, completion and do lowercase a, lowercase a. Where do I see it? Right over there. So let me check. That's q squared. And that's what I'm going to come up with. Well, what do these terms even mean? These terms are the result of this squaring that we just did. Believe it or not, this is actually going to give you the following scenario of p squared plus q squared. Oh, I did it wrong. <laughs> Very important equation. I messed it up. p squared plus 2pq plus q squared is equal to 1. This is a powerful, powerful, powerful tool that you need to be comfortable with using. Okay, so right now you've been throwing P's and Q's at you, genotypes, uh, phenotypes, alleles, frequencies, whatever. Okay, what does this all mean? Well, let's just look at an example. Let's calm down, okay, and just look at an example. Very simple idea. Let me give you the following example right over here. We have tons of space. Let's utilize it. Our example will be the following, and let's see how powerful this tool really is. Let's imagine I have a parental generation. Okay? And that parental generation represents itself with an allele frequency. And I'm given that the parental generation has the following allele frequency of capital A. Capital A's allele frequency is equal to 0 0.7. And by definition, if the capital A frequency, aka the frequency of P, is 0 0.7 plus Q is equal to 1, right? That's P, capital A, right there. Um, what is Q going to be? What is lowercase a going to be? That would mean that frequency of lowercase a in the parental generation is simply 0 0.3. So these are our allele frequencies right here, allele frequencies. Nothing crazy that we've done, but over here right now we have genotype frequencies. We're going to get to those a little bit later. So these are our parental generations, um, and this is what we've established. What we really want to know um, is the following scenario. I want you to calculate the allele frequencies in the F1 generation, in the next generation. That's what I want you to do. Well, you know what you do to calculate the allele frequencies in the next generation? You take what you know about the parental generation and you apply it with this powerful equation. What you're going to do is you're going to state that everybody's going to get an equal chance to mate, everybody's going to have an equal chance, equal opportunity to reproduce, and that's going to give you the use of this equation because this is a Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium right now that I'm giving you. The scenario is in Hardy-Weinberg. So calculate the allele frequency in F1 um, in, I would also write, I would have to write, in a Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium population. Well, all I have to do is the following. Use this equation. I'm going to use it p squared in this situation is equal to uh, 0.7 squared and that's equal to 0.49 why did I choose 0.7 well let's go back here p is equal to the frequency of dominant allele capital A frequency of the dominant allele is 0.7 I used the dominant allele 0.7 I got 0.49 but p squared represents what it represents capital A capital A and that's exactly what I'm gonna write 0.49 is our representation of our capital A, capital A. This is otherwise just known as 49%. Let's continue our scenario by going down the line of this equation. Plus would be 2PQ. 2PQ is equal to 2 times 0.7 times 0.3. Hopefully you know where I got those numbers from. And that gives us the following percentage of 0.42 is equal to, let's check over here, probability of this. That's 2PQ. So we're good. So now we have uh, capital A lowercase a. Very good. We have 42% of heterozygous, 49% homozygous dominant. And then we're going to end up with Q squared, which is equal to 0.3 squared. And remember, 0.3 squared is not 0.9, but rather it is 0, uh, 0.09. And that is equal to lowercase a, lowercase a. And we're going to box that in because that gives us an important information. And we end up with the following scenarios. Let's remember, in our uh, parent generation, what did we have? In the parent generation, I don't even want to write equal, our frequency of capital A was equal to 0 0.7. And our frequency of lowercase a was equal to 0 0.3. What I want you to do is go and take these numbers, okay? Take these this 49 out of 100, this 42 out of 100, and this 9 out of 100,
and go do exactly what we did at the second half of the last video and I will guarantee you that the F1 frequencies will end up being exactly the same. They will end up being 0.7 and also end up being 0.3. I want you to go do that as an exercise and hopefully you can get to the same result. Remember if you have two of these that means you got to double up the individuals that have the overall number of alleles. Here you got to split them in half and you got to double up over here. Hopefully you can work off of the example that we did in our previous video and come up with this powerful scenario to calculate allele and genotype frequencies under a Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium.